Hi, I'm Kate. Welcome back to another video. So this video has been highly requested. Even over on Instagram, people are always asking me, how do you train a nanny? So I've decided to share my method. Um, obviously, these are my opinions and you are welcome to share opinions in the description box below. The beginning, so I'll just take so, it in chronological order from the beginning to the end, from when I'm hiring them until when they're finally hired. I will also share my contract. I have told you guys time and again, just Google a contract, a sample contract, download it and change what you would like. A contract is an agreement between two people. Um, if you agree and your nanny agrees, that's a contract. So there's no special contract that you're going to find anywhere, okay? So if you enjoy this kind of content, don't forget to smash a big thumbs up and subscribe down below. Let's get into the video. So first and foremost, there are a few things to remember. Number one, being a nanny or a housekeeper is nobody's dream job. And especially in Kenya, people don't come up, little girls playing in the playground, and they're like, me, when I grow up, I want to be a nanny. Me, when I grow up, I want to be a housekeeper. So more often than not, this job has come from circumstances. They have no other prospects maybe because of their school education or family situation you um the thing to remember is when they're coming into your house it's more often as a last resort so it's not like that oh yes finally i got my dream job guys okay just t t look at it from that point of view i think that will really bring out or take away a lot of entitlement that we as employers have because we expect people to be a certain way, to behave in a certain way, um, to be trained and we ourselves are not doing the training. So I don't know who we expect would have trained them or maybe we just think that you know all women are good housekeepers and good nannies it's not true. People, and then you, of course, as an employer, you are different from their previous employer. And um, you just need to work out uh, a way to work that works for everybody. I know I've said work in that sentence maybe five times, but it is what it is. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is you're probably not going to pay them enough. The minimum wage for, for nannies and housekeepers in Kenya is something around 13,000 a month, maybe 14,000. Many of us don't come close to that. We are paying way less. We are, they are working longer hours. Many of them even live in our house. And we think that's actually more convenient for them because then they don't have to pay room and board and they don't have to pay transport. So we even pay them less than that. So it's, <laughs> Guys, guys, these this sorts of things really, really make me upset <clears throat> because we're just, it's, we're descendants of slave, slave drivers, honestly. Um, in, and, and especially like our, in, in our country, they're paid, like, <laughs> somebody one time DM'd me and was asking me something like they paid their housekeeper 6,000 a month. What? What do people do with 6,000 a month? What can you do? What can you do with 6,000? And I completely understand, I'm going to hold up my hands and say, I completely understand that um, the, person, the employer may not be able to afford more. But if you can, definitely try and meet the minimum wage, which is 13,000. And if you can, beat it. 
beat it. The cost of living in Nairobi is unacceptable. And taxes are high. It's unacceptable. Um, that's number two. Number three, they are probably desperate for a job. Um, people have come and you know they say all these manner of things like yes I can do A, B, C, D, I can do that, I can cook this, I can cook that. Um, so they're looking for a job, they would like to get any job because they, they need to support their family. Um, a lot of people might only be, might be the only breadwinner. Bread so consider those three things um, just so that you can put yourself in their shoes and have a little bit of empathy. There is a lot of classist talk where, where people say, they, oh me, housekeepers, I can't, you know, they do this and they do that and they, like as if all housekeepers are the same, like as if they all come, out from, come, come from the same community, the same place. That classist notion, like we are better than them, that is completely infuriating and it makes me sick to my stomach where people can think that they are better than others because of the job that they do. We're not like that. Please, let's not do that. You need to really bring yourself down. You are a person, they are a person, they are an employee and you are an employer. So my motivation um, around housekeepers and nannies has always been to be very to be professional and that guides everything that I that I do the way I speak the way I correct the way I pay the way everything I'm just trying to be professional I'm not trying to be kind I'm not trying to be helpful I'm not trying to be all these things that we have to, I'm not trying to make them my family I'm not I'm trying to be very professional and in my professionalism People find respect, so I respect them and they respect me. There is honor between us. Um, we look up, I look up to, to the housekeeper, whoever I have, I look up to them in certain ways, they look up to me in certain ways. So there's that mutual respect. We are two different people doing two different jobs, but we are both working women. These are some of the questions that I find are really, really helpful when I am interviewing. So what, how I usually get um, a housekeeper is I put, uh, I ask people on my WhatsApp groups, church WhatsApp groups, school WhatsApp groups. Hi guys, I live in such and such a place. I'm looking for a nanny and housekeeper. I always have to say a nanny and housekeeper so people know I have children. So I need somebody who is good with children number one and then good with the house number two. Because if they're good with the house and they're not good with children, how are we helping each other? And it's the children I need the help with the most. So I put out, I need somebody who is, who lives near or around my area uh, is the age, I don't really put an age, um, I think maybe sometimes I have, no, I've actually never put an age, but some people prefer younger housekeepers, some people prefer older housekeepers, so it's up to you, so you can put a starting age and, a, and the, like a maximum age. Um, some people even want to say unmarried, <laughs> and I, I don't know for whatever reason, but that's up to you. For me, it doesn't matter married or not married. It doesn't matter ethnic group completely. My plus has been if they are from my husband's ethnic group, then they can teach my children Kikuyu. Um, so that has been a plus. I have ne I've only had one who is from my husband's ethnic group. I have never had any that's from my ethnic group, um, which is Luo. It doesn't matter to me. It's the only thing that matters is your personality. Um, people give me the numbers of people who are looking for work. I call them up and I talk to them depending on how they sound on the phone. Don't trust your gut, guys. Trust your gut. Talk to somebody on the phone and then invite them to your house for an interview. Depending on how they sound on the phone, 
that's when I invite some over for an interview. So I only interview one person at a time because my interview lasts five days. And my interview is literally you come into my home, you do the work for a week. So when we're doing the interview, I tell you, um, okay, so I'm really liking our rapport right now and I would like to continue the interview. So the interview is going to be five days. I am going to pay you, I think I pay 500 or 600 shillings a day. Now I can't remember because it's Ruth has been with me for so long. If you get the job, I will still pay you for the week. If you don't get the job, I will pay you for the week and sayonara. So people, they come into my house um, at around 8 in the morning and they leave by 4 in the afternoon every day for a week. And that's how they interview. They cook, they clean, they take care of the children. The reason I do it like this is because I am very, very cognizant of people can lie people can put their best foot forward to get a job and during the interview interview process you have prepared for the interview and because the work is physical and you literally have to do the work um housekeeping and nannying it's very easy for people to yeah i can do this i can do that i can i have i have i have and then you notice so during the week you notice this person doesn't take direction very well or this person is very good with planning a menu or this person um, doesn't like children <laughs> or this you know you notice all these little things and then you can make your decision at the end of the week so what questions do I ask personally in the interview here are a few where have you worked before obviously what were you doing there? How long did you go? How long did you work there? Why did you leave? Standard questions. Even if you go to an interview in an office, your employer is going to ask you why are you here? Why did you leave that job? Why do you blah blah blah? They will ask you all those questions. So ask all those questions and listen to the answer. Like have an open mind and listen to the answer because sometimes they, uh, a housekeeper can be like, well, I left because the employer was not very friendly or I left because the pay wasn't enough or I left because... Listen to get clues as to how you can be a better employer and how they can be a better employee. Then I ask them for a referral. So can you give me the contact of the person that you were working with before? Can I speak to them about your work? Um, if they are reluctant to do that, then you know that there is something wrong and people usually give referrals in offices when they go to and if you're reluctant to do that, there's something um, amiss and if you call the referral and they are singing all the praises of the, of the nanny, you can ask them direct questions about the nanny themselves, where they worked, how long they worked because um, a lot of people I think have also reported that some people give a fake referral so it's more like a friend or a family member um, and so they just speak about you in, in, um, in a good light so you want to ask direct questions and leading questions so that you can find out if this is a, a genuine referral or not um, I ask them if they like children, if they have children, how old their children are, um, if their children go to school. I ask them about their family situation because I want to know, do you have um, a situation where you're going to work for me for two months and then quit because your husband has said or, you know, you know, like situations where it would not work for me well as an employer i am sympathetic to people but i cannot hire people based on goodwill alone i also need a good worker so you want to find out about people's family situations are they is it going to be a problem one time um, I spoke to this lady on the phone and before she came to my house, I asked her, okay, how long can you, um, when can you come to my house? And she told me I can only come between this time and this time because I have to be home to cook for my husband. And I, for me, that I, was a clear indication that our relationship would not work 
because then it means that if I ever needed her to stay a little bit later or come a little bit earlier, she wouldn't be able to do that. Um, and even though she was looking for work, she was not flexible in that way. So I tried to ask her, okay, can you come at a different time? Can you come earlier? She said, no, absolutely not. She has to be home to, to cook for her husband before he leaves and home again to cook for him when he comes home. So that was her, her priority and my priority was to get a worker. So I, I did not follow up um, on, the, on, the interview, on the interview process after that. I asked them if they know how to cook, what do they know how to cook, um, direct st stuff that we like to eat. We, we eat chapatis. Do you know how to cook chapati? Yes, no. Okay, so that's one of the things that we can learn during the week. Um, and to see if there's certain things that you can teach them how to cook and how well they pick up in that week when you are training them. That's why that's why I interview for a week, you guys, because it's just like, there's so many things that you can learn about a person in, in five days that you might not be able to get from them in however long the interview takes, like half an hour, 10 minutes, I don't know how long interviews take. Um, and then also they can, the interview is usually with, with the whole family is there, my children are usually sitting in, Sometimes they're outside, but sometimes they're there just to see how well this person relates to talking to me as they are being distracted by children or, you know, stuff, the normal activity in the home. Because the home is the office and it's not sanitary. It is loud, it is interrupting, it is a lot of things. So it's just to make sure, can this person juggle? Are they good with multitasking? Stuff like that. And the final question that I always ask them is, do you pray? Do you go to church? I don't really care where people go to church or um, how often if they go to church, but I am a, a, a spiritual person. I do pray. And because you're going to be working with my children, I want to be able to know that I can trust that we are both covering them, <laughs> you know, so to speak. I want us to be on the same page. We are covering them, we are praying for them. You, I pray for your family, you pray for my family. Um, and as long as we are praying to God, uh, we, we, are, we are okay. You know, it doesn't matter if you are Presbyterian, no, Presbyterian. Presbyterian. Pres Pres <laughs> press B Presbyterian or Catholic or Baptist or any of those things it doesn't matter so yeah. now the interview is finished and now we are going into the week of kind of like probation but although we're going to talk about probation later so the week of interview I want the housekeeper that I've hired to I usually ask them to develop a menu. So I tell them the basics of what we usually eat. We eat, let's say, meat twice a week. We might, we have like chapati, um, ugali, we eat normal Kenyan food. And then um, in the weekend, we might go out or we might eat leftovers um, and also you know stuff like that and breakfast as well so develop a menu and then we'll sit down so on the first day that they come the next day that they come i have them sit down to develop the menu so that i can see how they they think um one time i hired this person and then they came into the house and the first meal that they cooked was beef rice and and, and vegetables and then the next day they cooked chicken and and ugali and I and the next day I saw them starting to defrost I think it was fish or something like that and I told them just stop there <laughs> no we do not do that here we can't we don't eat meat every day we can't afford it neither is it healthy for you so in our home we, we eat meat twice a week so you decide when those will be, they cannot be consecutive days. Um, so that was how, you know, you can, you get to learn how somebody um, works. Another time, I, I, I think I hadn't, I was just about to go out for shopping and 
there was two packets of milk in the fridge and when I came home they were gone so I asked her what happened to the milk she said she made tea and I'm like for who? who did you make tea for with a liter of milk? so you see kind those are that's how you realize how people use groceries how people um it's it's a very it saves you a lot of expense later because you're very quick to see because you are interviewing you're very quick to see how people use things how people are how people behave and do their work um, and you're able to correct sooner rather than before it's too late and you you're at work and you don't realize that somebody is using a liter of milk to make two cups of tea every day i also ask them to design a work plan so you, you cannot mop the house every single day this is not a hospital you can sweep every day but you don't need to wash the toilets and the bathroom and uh, because I know there's a motivation to be really 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 good and really really clean as soon as you come into the job and then you so you just want to show how well you clean uh, but that is not in my home that is not the priority the priority is how well do you engage the children how well do you play with them um, teach them feed them stuff like that um, and and Ruth came in when Keo was I think I don't think he was a year yet was he a year maybe just a year and a bit so he was feeding himself and so I had to show her look this is where you know he sits don't force him to eat if he doesn't want to eat it's okay if he doesn't eat the whole day I have to say such things because I know that um, nannies could get carried away with a baby the baby is not eating and the parent keeps asking why is this child eating why isn't this child eating and you, the nanny ends up force feeding the child which has ended tragically for many for many families so those are some of the things that i kind of circumvent and i i, I correct before even it starts because i just want the person to know look you're here to be a nanny number one a housekeeper second so I have them create the, the work plan and then to stick by it and to see if they get all the stuff done, windows, like they create it themselves. It's not me who tells them now mop, now do this, now do that. Uh, I'm not their manager, I'm their employer and they have to manage themselves. Also I see how well they are managing the groceries in that if it's running low they tell me before it runs out. That that thing of such and such is finished is is ridiculous you if if something that you are working with is finished and then you say after it is finished then your job is actually interrupted and you cannot do your job well because the thing is finished that's on you that's your fault not mine because i i don't manage it i don't look at it every single day i'm busy doing this like you know shooting videos so it's up to you to be like um such and such is getting finished we have two days with the sugar and we have blah 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 with the rice um and manage that i don't let stuff get spoiled in the fridge you know stuff like that okay so that's what i do to hire them and then to to train them so now let's go into the contract and by the way if you have any questions about what i have said in this video just write them in the description write them in the comments below and i will answer as much as i can so here is our contract that we signed between me and ruth um so when i was hiring her i told her i really really like your work this week and I would like to have you full time. You, I'm going to give you three months probation where we see at the end of the three months if we would like to work together. I also ask her if she is um, happy with our family and if she would like to continue because it's not only one-sided. I mean, it's do you want to work here? Um, and yeah, so she said, yeah, obviously, and she's still here. So the. I got a contract of the internet, I edited it and I will show you some of the parts in the contract. So the first part, 
um, and I give them I give her the contract all the contracts that I've ever had I give her the contract and ask her to go home with it and read it and um, if she has anybody that she can ask to ask them about it so that it's not something that she's doing out of duress like go home with it for a week you know read it send it to people see if you would like to change anything and then we go from there there's a starting date and a completion date of the probation so the probation oh, oh so she's been with us for a minute right. so the duties that she has are listed so duties taking care of the children at home and other locations so I can go I go out with her um, to parties or events or to my parents house if I need her um, and then that's in the contract caring for the children in the family including changing nappies bathing playing and ensuring safety so if she is not happy with any of those she needs to say it right off the bat she needs to speak to the children in english and kikuyu exclusively with emphasis on helping them learn the language through storytelling so she sings to the kids she speaks to them in kikuyu um she also speaks to them in kiswahili um, outside and inside the house so now the children are picking up a lot of kikuyu they know a lot more kiswahili um, and mostly she speaks to them in english she needs to do laundry machine and hand wash folding and hanging of the children's clothes um, organizing children's toys and other things and then coordinating and joining the joining the parents on outings with the children cooking meals for the family including writing grocery shop shopping lists and then cleaning the house for the family you write her basic salary there and this can be increased payments for the salary will be made via m pesa or into a bank account or cash and if you if i'm paying cash I get, uh, there's a voucher that she signs but other than that the M-Pesa message is the record that we both have sometimes she asks for a loan or an advance and she has to do that in writing so she does it in writing via text and then I respond and then I can send her the money so the texts are our records then um, um, we made an amendment that I signed for because the first, I think it was the first month, the first two months, I noticed she was asking me for an advance before the date of payment because I said that I would pay her every month on the, on the last day of the month and I noticed that she was asking me for an advance for her next salary. So I figured she was struggling financially in that she wasn't able to meet her obligations before the month the month um, started so I asked her if she would like me to be paying her twice a month so I pay her half in the middle and half at the end and it has worked beautifully for two years then she gave me her ID I photocopied it and put it in my records her ID is right there um, holding somebody's ID is illegal and you should never do that. It's actually called trafficking. You're not allowed to hold somebody's um, d documents. So don't do that. Just take the photocopy and give it back. Um, she is entitled to two days of leave per month with full pay. Um, in addition to statutory or local holidays. So she can take the leave days any day that she wants. She needs to tell me in advance that I plan to give her the leave days I think um, she usually tells me two to three days in advance and I'm happy to do that she can also take four days sick leave with full pay and thereafter a maximum of another four days sick leave with half pay so all these things are written down so that we both know nobody is nyanya saying the other we are completely in agreement we are completely compliant we are both working well together so if i want to terminate the salary i need to give her one month's notice or one month's salary she is also obligated to give me one month's notice if she wants to leave or in lieu of one month salary if i need to if disciplinary disciplinary action needs to be taken 
then I can give her a warning. I need to give her a warning, verbal warning, written warning, and then another course of action is taken. So Just have have a contract. My my main point is have a contract because it really really helps to create a professional work environment. And when you co you create a professional work environment, you create respect and honor between you and your employee and then you are actually increasing the level of work so the work um the person might be untrained and the person might never have worked in a professional environment but you can introduce them to that and 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 behave in a way in an, a way that is dignifying and lifts people up, up rather than you know calling people names derogatory names because they work for you in that capacity uh, people feel that and people are few people like there's no need to to be like that okay i really really hope you guys learned something and enjoyed this video it, it has been requested a lot and till next time bye